yeah, welcome, welcome back to school, everybody. Um, anybody, is this your first quarter ever at UCLA? Anybody? Yes, first quarter. All right, welcome to uh, welcome to school. Um, it's, it's the best. Um, UCLA is the best. Okay. Um, anyway, yeah. So um, this is a, this is our course, Introduction to Computational Statistics with R. Uh, I'm uh, I'm excited to uh, to teach the class, and uh, and I hope you guys are excited to learn. Um, can you guys all hear me okay? Yeah? Okay. Um, normally I use a, a mic, but I uh, can't figure it out right now, so <laughs> I'll figure it out uh, next time. Um, all right, so this is Stats 102A. Um, my name is Miles Chen. I'll be your, uh, your teacher, and that's my email address, and the, uh, the class website, all of that is posted to uh, CCLE, and, uh, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. Um, sometimes uh, when I send you a response to an email, it might come from uh, my Gmail address. Still me, um, so um, so that's fine. Um, my office is in uh, Math Sciences, eighth floor, eighty-one hundred five. Uh, I think you guys are probably familiar with that classroom, but if you're not, it's right across from the elevator. Um, so so there you go, uh, and and that's when uh, these are when my office hours are held. Okay. Is it so far so good? <laughs> yeah, just my name, right? <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh forgive me for this uh, little cheesy bit here, but uh but this is it says my commitment to you. It says you are the uh the paying customer, uh and it's true you are paying um a good amount of money to uh to come to school here, okay? Uh, and so it is my goal that you are completely satisfied with the course and the teaching I provide to you. Uh, and in return, I hope to receive uh, very high reviews from you at the, uh, the end of the quarter, okay? Uh, and you guys laugh, but I'm totally serious. Um, you know, uh, I feel like I have my dream job. I love statistics. I love teaching. I love UCLA. So I, I can't think of a better job to have. Um, and so... Um, so I'm very excited to, uh, to be here. Um, that said, this is only my second year as a lecturer here at UCLA. And so, um, you know, in the beginning of a lecturer's career, uh, the student reviews are very important for um, my career, I guess, uh, security. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, uh, I'm, of course, I'm biased, but I think I'll do a good job teaching, um, and I hope uh, I hope you guys feel the same way, and uh, and I hope you will uh, you will let um, the administration know uh, so in uh, in in your reviews. Um, anyway, it says uh, my job is to educate you to learn the skills and methods for data analysis, and um, oh, and, and I. I already said this, but I guess it was worth me typing out. Uh, and it says, I love the subject of statistics and I love teaching. So, um, you know, I hope, I hope that comes across in the, uh, in the lectures. Um, I hope you gain, you know, a lot of you are probably statistics majors or stats minors, maybe applied math majors, which is similar. Uh, I mean, different, but similar, and there's overlap. And, or you know maybe you're something completely different, and, and that's also okay. Uh, I hope you feel like you've made a good choice in taking this class and uh, made a good choice in choosing statistics as a major. Uh, if you're not a stats major, and after you, this class you're like, "Wow, I want to be a stats major." Um, major in stats, it's it's the best. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, you guys laugh, but it really is. Um, and so. So anyway, um, here we go. Uh, is that good? All right, okay, my expectations of you. So if you're not happy with uh, anything in the course, um, please let me know so I can fix the problem. Um, don't just grumble quietly to yourself and then leave a snarky review at the end. Um, <laughs> at the same time, I also expect you guys to put forth a good, good faith effort into uh, the assignments. Uh, some of the assignments will be challenging and hard and and I don't want you guys to uh, get angry at me for giving you a hard assignment, but um, you know, I, I hope you guys 
work hard, okay? Um, you are a allowed to collaborate on the homeworks uh, and work with each other, but the work you do needs to be your own, okay? Um, are you guys familiar with this idea, concept of a growth mindset? Some of you are? Okay. Um, well, maybe I'll link a TED Talk on CCLE. Um, but, you know, there's kind of these different schools of thought uh, on how the brain works. And, uh, and so uh, some believe not in a, a growth mindset, but just kind of like you have this talent and this ability. You know, like some people are better at math and some people are bad at math, okay? And so if you're good at math, then you can do math. And if you're bad at math, then you can't. Uh, where a growth mindset says, you know, sure, we're, we might start off with different um, inherent abilities, but at least as far as our brain goes, you know, if we challenge ourselves in certain areas, um, we will get better at these things. And, and the same thing I truly believe applies to programming, okay? Um, I would say there's very few people that start off as excellent coders, okay? Um, and so for the rest of us, you know, we tried to tackle some coding and, and it's hard and, uh, and it's very tempting to want to give up, okay? But you're not going to get better at coding if someone else does the coding for you, okay? It's like you're not going to get stronger if you go to the gym and you have your friend do the workout for you. Um, and so, and you don't get better just by watching people uh, work out or get better by watching other people code. Um, you have to do it yourself. You have to challenge your brain, make your brain say, oh, this is hard. Um, but by continually putting yourself in these uh, situations that are challenging, you'll get better, okay? Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's my expectation uh, from you, okay? Uh, let's see. Okay, um, I guess before recording here, um, it is worth talking, uh, covering the l l course syllabus. How do I get there? Okay, here we are. Okay. Um, okay, so course syllabus pretty much has a lot of the same stuff. As far as software goes, there's an assumption here that everyone has taken STATS 20 already. Uh, anybody not taken STATS 20? Oh, okay. All right. And those of you, okay, so there's only just a handful of you who have not taken STATS 20. I'm assuming you have at least a working knowledge and base of R. Is that good? Okay. So, so then we should be fine. Okay. But anyway, um, so all of you should already have R and R Studio on your computer. If not, get R and R Studio on your computer. Um, you can ask a classmate if you have no idea how to do that. Um, and then, you know, uh, the textbooks for this class, um, I've, I found, uh, you know, maybe three or four textbooks, about four of them. And we're going to just take a few chapters from one and a few chapters from another. Um, for this class, I was able to find everything uh, free online for you guys, legally free, okay, because of the UCLA uh, library subscriptions. Um, so they, uh, so that's that's great. You guys don't have to um, purchase any textbooks unless you insist on having a physical copy. Then it's up to you how you spend your money. Um, but you know, last I checked, most students would prefer not to spend their money on textbooks for for whatever reason. That you know, my 102B class, which I'm planning out, I I have to. Students are going to have to buy a textbook, OK? Um, OK, so we're going to use um, Advanced R from Hadley Wickham. Uh, you can get it right here, CRC Net Base. Um, you guys know that at UCLA, we have a bunch of digital library subscriptions, OK? And so a lot of excellent textbooks are available for free. Um, not every textbook, obviously. Um, but uh, you know, so CRC Net Base is uh, Taylor and Francis's uh, publishing thing and so they um, so they have textbooks here um, and so you can download uh, you have to download it chapter by chapter it's not too terrible um, but then um, Hadley Wickham he also has kind of a HTML version of the textbook available online just go to Google and type in advanced R it'll be the uh, the first hit there and uh, and it's pretty much the textbook but just online okay 
uh, the R Graphics Cookbook, which is from O'Reilly, okay, and that is um, via Safari Books Online, okay, and so um, this textbook you got to read in your browser, um, but I don't think that's too terrible either. Um, and Safari Books Online, if you want to learn anything about computer programming, say like Python or something like that, um, there's tons of books and resources available for you there, okay? If you feel like your R skills are super rusty, okay, then just go to uh, type in here and type in R, okay? And, uh, and you'll have all of these books, and, uh, and there's a few that, to get started, things like uh, learning R and then like getting started with R and things like that. Um, you'll, have to, you'll have to sort through that. Um, but I, I'm assuming you guys, again, all took STATS 20, so you're, you're fine in that department. Um, and then we've got Introduction to Scientific Programming and Simulation Using R. Uh, we'll abbreviate this SPURS, even though I know the letters aren't in that order. Um, it just sounds better than SPURS. Um, and then we have uh, Randomization of Bootstrap Methods. So this will be the other, other text. Um, so all of these, uh, they're, they're free as long as you're connected to the UCLA network. If, uh, if you live off campus and you want to read the book, you're going to have to uh, connect via the VPN, okay? And, uh, and I'm assuming you guys are all know how to use the VPN, right? And if not, just oh, I've got the link here or just Google UCLA VPN, okay? Um, okay, as far as uh, homework goes, or uh, grading goes, 60% uh, will uh, be homework, okay? We'll have six homework assignments. Each homework is worth 10% of your grade. Uh, none of them are dropped, so uh, make sure you do your homework, okay? Uh, make sure you turn them in on time and, and things like that. Don't, don't skip out, because if you, if you skip a homework assignment, you know, that's 10% of your grade right there already, okay? Um, We'll have a midterm and final exam. They'll, uh, they'll both be in class. Uh, the midterm is scheduled for week five Friday. Okay, it'll be handwritten in class, 45 minutes, um, covering you know, mostly content from chapter, er, weeks you know, one through four. Uh, and uh, it won't be too terrible. I mean, it'll, uh, it's a midterm, right? It's uh, you're gonna have to, you're going to have to study and make sure you know your stuff. Um, but it'll be doable, OK? Um, uh, final exam also uh, in class handwritten, OK? And then we'll have um, attendance and uh, participation. Uh, I'll take attendance just on arbitrarily selected days, OK? So I might just go through a roll call. And then, um, and then I'll send you guys an invitation to Piazza. Piazza is kind of like an online forum. Uh, maybe you've seen it before. Uh, I think it's uh, it's a great way to collaborate, um, and so uh, you know students can answer each other's questions, and then I'll also uh, chime in online to uh, uh, to answer answer some questions, and and the TAs are also going to be on there as well. Okay, so if you have questions about the homework or questions about uh, the lectures, you can you can post them there. Okay. You know, if you have personal issues, yeah, go ahead and send me an email for that. But if it's a, if it's a homework-related thing, and you send it to me via email, okay, I'm not not to be rude, but I might send you a quick reply that just says, you know, please ask, post this same question on Piazza or something like that. Okay. The only thing I don't want you to do on Piazza is like, give out the answers to the homework and just type out a whole, you know, copy and paste your wall of code onto Piazza so that other students can see how you how you answered the thing okay that's that's uh, that's what I don't want you to do and if you do that I'll just kind of like delete that that post you're not I won't get, I'm not gonna get you in trouble or anything but just don't do that okay um, okay then the homework assignments uh, I'll post them as our markdown files Okay, and I'll talk about R Markdown in a little bit, but um, we're going to use R Markdown to uh, to answer and render all of our files, and then uh, and you'll render them as HTML files, and you'll upload the HTML files uh, for grading. Okay, uh, 
this is the uh, late policy for homework is that there is a 10 minute grace period okay so you know uh, it might say you know homeworks due at six o'clock or something if you turn it in by 610 no no penalty okay after that um, there is a 10 point penalty for being late uh, for the first hour and then five points for every uh, additional hour it is late okay so um, you know I would some of you will finish your homework assignments early and then uh, upload it I would just set an alarm for yourself and just say like check you know on the day that it's due at 5 p.m. or whatever like an hour before it's due just make sure that it did upload properly okay because um, the worst would be if you think it was uploaded and then it didn't upload and like you realize the next day and by then it's like 24 hours late and basically at that point the, the late policy you're, you're not going to get any credit for it um, uh, you know that's like that's that's really bad and um, you know students have been in the past have like tried to show me all of these screenshots on their computer trying to like prove to me that the homework was on time or something it's like it's you can't yeah you just upload it make sure it works okay and uh, and it and so it's your responsibility that it was uploaded um, properly okay uh, so so please make sure you you've uploaded that uh, okay, academic integrity, basically, um, be honest, don't cheat. Um, and, uh, and then this is kind of an outline of topics that we'll cover. I'll, uh, I'll get into this uh, a little bit later. Uh, are there any questions based on uh, for the class logistics? Yes? Would the PGI exams be open book? Um, I was not planning on making it open book. Um, in my opinion, they're very doable, uh, despite not being open book. Okay, and um, and I'm I'm more of a straight scale grader. Okay, so what you know, I don't I don't really believe in curving unless like the class average is absolutely terrible. I might just add ten points to everyone's grade or something if it if it if it's really bad, but. I don't really believe in curving, so because I don't want you guys feeling like you have to compete against each other. Okay, so if if there is going to be some kind of benefit to the class, it'll be across the board. Like I'll just add 10, 10 points to everyone's grade rather than doing some kind of funny scaling thing. Um, but you know, in my opinion, it it will be doable. Okay. Um, you know, of course I'm biased and I'm gonna think that but uh, but uh, yeah I'll, I'll be fair I'll be fair to the students okay so all right is this good okay so um, I think a, a good question you should ask um, anytime you take a class is like why am I taking this class right other than like this is a required course if you want to major in statistics or something um, but you know what is this class about okay so the class is titled Introduction to Computational Statistics with R, right? Or Introductory, uh, something like that. Okay. <laughs> so, um, okay. So anyway, you've chosen to uh, study statistics. And so, you know, if no one has told you, like, what is, like, maybe, um, maybe it's different today. But whenever I told people, like, I'm studying statistics or, like, I teach statistics, like a lot of times they're asking, it's like, oh, I hated statistics. And it's like, this is like my career. Don't, uh, that hurts my heart here, you know? Like, <laughs> um, so, but anyway, I, so, you know, why do we study statistics? And I say, I argue we study statistics to gain a better understanding of the world. Um, although this could be said about uh, many, many subjects, you know, history helps you understand the world. Uh, biology, chemistry, a lot of a lot of sciences, you know, social science, whatever. These help you understand different aspects of the world, and so in, in particular, I say uh, statistics uh, allows us to take data and then make meaningful conclusions from it. Right? We're uh, we're living in an age where we are constantly generating and producing data just because you know you use a phone and you're like every time you walk around with this phone, you're 
generating data, right? Um, your location and who you're contacting or what, what things you click online, that's all. People are tracking all of this. Every time you swipe your credit card, somewhere, somewhere, this is all being kept track of. And so, um, but you know, we have all of this information, all of this data, what can this say, right? What can we um, do with it? And so, you know, um, from a practical perspective, uh, you know, people are tracking your habits online and so they target certain advertisements to you and they try to figure out which advertisements are most likely to result in you giving them money eventually. Um, but in other, on other things, you know, there's lots of work being done on kind of the genetic front, right? Um, you can submit your saliva to get analyzed and they'll uh, they'll sequence your genome and then they'll try to figure out and if as they gather more and more genetic data and more things they can try to figure out which genetic markers are linked to this trait or that trait or you know these problems and try to figure things out there's um, you know all of that is being done via uh, statistics okay and so in statistics, we're always asking this question, what does this data tell me about the world? Okay, and so, you know, with data, we can describe and summarize it. And at least um, at some per point, rather than just saying these are the descriptions of the data, we want to ask, you know, could this data that I have, could this just be a random fluke, result of a random fluke, or does it actually indicate something special is going on, okay? And so, if you recall your intro stats class, um, maybe you took stats here at UCLA, maybe you uh, took AP stats in high school, or something like that, um, you learned descriptive statistics, and then you moved on to inferential statistics, where you made confidence intervals and performed hypothesis tests, okay? And so, confidence intervals and hypothesis tests, those def uh, depend on the mathematics behind the central limit there, okay? And so if, if you've taken 100B or you, you are taking 100B, you know, you will prove that the central limit theorem works and all of that, okay? In your stat, intro stats class, they kind of just said, here's this thing called the central limit theorem. We promise you it works. And because it works, you can do all of this stuff. And, and in the intro class or the, uh, you know, high school level class, that's fine, right? And um, and for, for most of uh, our life, we're often fine with just saying like, oh, gravity works, even though we don't fully understand exactly, <laughs> or like, I mean, we have a pretty good understanding of how it works now, but um, you know, even if you don't, when you're a kid, it's like, oh yeah, there's this thing called gravity and, and it works and, and that's fine. And so central limit theorem, it works. And so, you know, in interest tests, this is, the, uh, the logic that goes through a hypothesis test, right? Um, so you might say, like, um, if we're assuming that the population has a mean of 10, then whenever I take samples, random samples from this population, those random samples should have a sample mean that's also close to 10, right? That's basically what the central limit theorem says. It says that if the population has a mean of 10, when you take a random sample from it, that sample should have a sample mean also close to 10, okay? And so let's say the sample you have has a mean of 11.3, okay? And so according to probability and the central limit theorem, the math behind that and the amount of variance that we have <coughs> in the sample that we have, maybe it turns out that there is a very low probability, okay? And in this case, that very low probability we call a p-value. Uh, so maybe there's a very low probability that a random sample will produce um, a sample mean with, of, of 11.3, okay? And if that's the case, then we say, well, because of all of this, um, because of our understanding of the central limit theorem and sampling distributions, we're gonna say, I don't believe that my randomly selected sample that I have came from a population with a mean of 10, okay? So I'm hoping this logic, this thinking, feels good for, uh, for your intro stats, right? So this is when you did hypothesis testing, 
and, and you did this, right? Okay, so this is some the, this is the kind of logic that we applied when we did hypothesis testing. And uh, and when you think about that, okay, that the idea that the population has a mean of ten, that is a very simple data generating model. Okay, it's a, it's a model. It's just this idea that the data we have is coming from a population with a mean of 10, okay? And, and in our model of reality, okay, we're going to test the belief that the data that we have is generated by a population with a mean of 10, okay, being the model parameter, okay? And then, you know, our, we're going to say that the sample means follow a normal distribution. That's, again, central limit theorem. And, uh, and our understanding of probability in this as regard comes from, a, from an analytic perspective, right? There's the math that you learn in 100B that underlies all of these conclusions that we're doing when you do a t-test or when you do some kind of z-test or something like that, OK? So I explained all of this to you to contrast the way computational statistics works, OK? So in this class, we're going to cover computational statistics. And so, you know, I think 100B is probably one of the most challenging courses in the um, uh, undergraduate statistics major, right? It's it's probably, I don't know, huh? A little, a little bit? Okay, I don't, you know, maybe some of you are like, this was my favorite class, 100B, right? But in my opinion, it's probably one of the more, um, more weighty classes, right? And that is for simple things like the central limit theorem, upon which all of these, uh, you know, t-tests and, and stuff re re rely, okay? And sometimes you'll have a model or an idea of where your data is coming from, and it gets really complicated. Okay, and and in that case, the math, the mathematical part, could become even impossible to solve from an analytic perspective. It could just get really nasty, perhaps even impossible. And so, rather than trying to answer our questions, our statistical questions based on um, this analytical method, we can use what we call computationally intensive methods, such as uh, simulations or resampling to make inferences about the parameters. Have you guys done uh, randomization testing? No. Okay. And that's great because that's what we're going to cover in this class. Okay. So there's you know ideas of randomization testing or permutation testing and bootstrap testing. These are computationally <laughs> intensive methods that allow us to get at the answer without having to understand all of the complicated math. Okay, So we might not be able to answer the question analytically, but we can have the computer just kind of keep trying over and over and over again to, uh, to get at this answer. Okay, And so that's, so computational statistics is kind of this, this broad field uh, in which we employ the use of a computer and these computationally intensive methods to answer our statistical questions, okay? Computational statistics is not doing just doing statistics with a computer. That's just doing statistics with a computer, okay? So, you know, if you just take data, throw it into R and say do a t-test, that is not computational statistics. That's doing a t-test on R, okay? And it's using the same analytic understanding of the central limit theorem and all of that, it's using that analytic understanding to give you an answer. The, if you go into R and you type in t.test and, and you do that, it's using the analytic understanding. That's not computational statistics. It's The computer helps do the calculations quickly, but that's, um, that's not what this class is about. Okay, And so this class is going to be kind of just your introduction to this field. Okay, It's a very big field. A, a lot of questions can be answered. Okay. And so we're going to start, we're going to say, well, I say this class can be thematically split into two parts. The first part is learning R and its packages, like the tools of computational statistics. And then the second part will be some of the introductory methods of computational statistics, OK? So you know, here I talk, say it's similar to woodshop class. I don't know if any of you, did anyone take woodshop in high school or metal shop or? No, this is not the. Uh, right demographic that takes a <laughs> wood shop, right? You guys, I don't know, took, I don't know what you get electives you took in high school, right? Computer networking or, was there a computer science 
elective in no okay well, yeah, whatever all right um <laughs> journalism and yearbook uh so anyway you know in woodshop if you were to take a woodshop class like the first two weeks it's just like safety right don't chop off your fingers don't do anything d stupid you know wear your safety goggles in case pieces of wood go flying uh, it's all safety and then it's like this is how you use the machines and then finally after all of this time spent just learning how to operate a machine then it's like now you can build a birdhouse okay and similarly that's kind of what we're going to do um, you have already taken stats 20 so you have a beginning understanding of R we're going to delve a little bit more into R uh, kind of some intermediate to advanced R and we'll spend you know the good first four or five weeks doing that and then we'll get into some of these introductory methods so as far as the tools go we'll learn R and R Studio and R Markdown okay um, you probably already know some basic flow control and basic loops and stuff like that but we'll, we'll cover that a little bit uh, as well um, are you guys familiar with the tidyverse okay so these are very very useful packages okay so this is called the tidyverse because uh, most of them are developed by this guy Hadley Wickham have you guys heard of that name okay well I'll, I'll tell you Hadley Wickham is a good name to know as far as R goes and um, so one of the greatest things about R is that you can load all of these packages and libraries that add functionality okay so that when you want to achieve a task uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time okay and you can um, you know R starts you off with basic tools like a uh, like a hammer but then with uh, you can load these libraries that basically give you like a nail gun okay and helps you do s the same tasks but faster and more efficiently okay and so we'll, we'll learn some of these packages uh, specifically tidy and deplier okay and we'll also learn a few other things uh, like uh, a little bit of text processing like re regular expressions and web scraping um, uh, some ggplot2 um, and uh, and that stuff okay so that will be that on the tool side okay and then for the computational statistics stuff uh, we'll cover floating point arithmetic uh, some basic numeric methods probably uh, root finding is one of the uh, the most basic ones uh, some optimization very basic optimization okay uh, you can spend your entire life devoted to optimization take entire courses on it uh, we're gonna spend like maybe a week or two on just some basic concepts of optimization we'll look at uh, some simulation and then we'll get into randomization testing and bootstrap testing okay so uh, so I know um, a lot of you guys are probably eager to learn machine learning and uh, you know, I don't know all of these fancy things neural networks and, uh, and all of this stuff uh, and those are great things um, we won't get to that in the first computational statistics class okay um, I'm, I'm scheduled to teach 102 B next quarter okay and uh, and I'm hoping to cover at least some of these um, topics in machine learning and things like that um, but we're, we're gonna have to start with the basics before we can you know get into these these fancier topics um, and so anyway if you like my class you know register for my uh, for my next one right um, <laughs> so um, but I only have one section of 102 B next quarter I have two sections 102 a only one 102 B but anyway okay um, before we get into our markdown, which uh, which we'll talk about now, um, are there any questions, comments? No, we're good. Okay. All right. Uh, our markdown. Okay. So maybe you are already familiar with our markdown. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Um, it's a it's a great tool. Um, so you know, before our markdown. If you had to submit homework that involved R coding, um, you know the process looked something like this: you would prepare your data, and then you would do your modeling and analysis, create your charts and your graphs and your results, all of that, and then you would copy and paste them into like a Word document, add your commentary, and then you would 
submit that, okay? But then, if there was ever a problem with your data or your analysis or one of the charts and graphs, you had to go back and redo all of that work and then copy and paste all of your new results into the Word document, okay? And so it was, it was very annoying whenever um, you had to make adjustments, okay? And uh, so, you know, I also teach Stats 10, and in Stats 10, you use like Fathom, and it's, you have to like copy and paste the things over into Word. And I would love to use R Markdown, but I think, well, the department wants to keep using, um, keep things at a simple level with, uh, with, uh, with Fathom for, uh, for Stats 10. But, uh, but anyway, so R Markdown, um, it integrates the R code and the analysis into the document itself, okay? And changes made to the data or into the analysis, those get updated directly into the document, okay? And, uh, and then the documents um, are rendered into HTML or PDFs or, um, or even Word, Word documents, okay? And so, you know, this presentation itself is actually made in R Markdown, okay? And so if, uh, if uh, you know, this is it right here, okay? And um, the thing about R is that, um, or, or Markdown is that it was created for uh, readability in mind, okay? So that when you look at the source code, for our Markdown document, it looks just like a regular old plain text file. And even if you couldn't render the document, you could look at the source code and it would make sense to you, okay? So for example, if we look at my, my document here, like it's just me typing things out and then, you know, headlines and bullet points, they're just, you know, the hash symbol and, and dashes, okay? and. Um, and then it's only like when you render these things that it gets turned into um, basically slides and stuff, okay? Um, the only thing is, is that you don't get uh, very much fine control over the exact styling or the placement in the, uh, the rendered document, uh, and that's the trade-off. Uh, you get simplicity, but you don't get like, you know, if you're a graphic designer, you'd be annoyed because the computer makes all of the decisions for you, and, and this is not not that, okay? Um, and so, you know, some resources. Uh, this uh, R Markdown cheat sheet, this is a PDF, and it just tells you exactly um, how it works, and it's excellent, all right? Uh, and it just says, like, uh, you want to make a header, this is what you do. Uh, you want to. Would you ask again? Uh, it's on CCLA. So uh, I have the the HTML for this. You can also just go to Google and type in R Markdown Cheat Sheet, okay? It'll be like the first hit, okay? Yeah, question. Do you usually post your slides on, on CCLA after your lecture? Yes, and actually today's slides are already posted okay. on CCLA already. And actually, and I'm, I'm also recording what's happening on my screen and the words coming out of my mouth, oh. and, and so I will... <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm glad uh, we have a satisfied customer today. So, um, so I'm recording this, and I will post it onto YouTube. Okay, and and my experience is that uh, so I use a little program called Snagit, um, the same company as Camtasia. My experience is that this method produces higher quality um, videos than, uh, say, Bruincast or something like that. And so those will be available. Uh, to you for viewing. Um, uh, <laughs> please come to class, okay? <laughs> All right. Um, I know, so I'm, I'm going to be recording these, and you know, it could be tempting to just like skip class and then watch it on, um, watch the video later, uh, and then like turn the video up to double speed so you get the content in 25 minutes. Um, <laughs> You know, come, come to class. I, I, I'll take attendance every now and then. Um, and I, I think the uh, it's always encouraging to me to see a full class. And I think it's also encouraging to the other students to see a relatively full class as well. So, so come to class, all right? Um, so, you know, I, I just want to show you a little bit. Like, this is our markdown. Um, like, when you, 
when you start R, you're going to go to, um, you start R Studio, and then under this new file thing, you just go to create a new R Markdown document, okay? And it'll ask you things, and uh, it'll say, like, create a, so again, all you do is you just go to this, you can do file, new file, R Markdown through the menu, or this is your toolbar, and you just go to new R Markdown, okay? And then you can choose a presentation or uh, shiny or whatever. And then so for as far as presentations go, you can have IO slides or slidey. And for documents, you can have HTML, PDF, or Word. If you want a PDF, you need to have mic tech or LaTeX or Mac tech, I don't know, some kind of tech installation installed on your, um, on your computer. That's tech, T-E-X. Um, and uh, that you can look online on how to do that, OK? Uh, and so you know, you'd enter your thing like demo document, and then you the author's miles here, okay? And then um, so you do this and it says, and this is it. And then and it starts off with just some random stuff, and then you click knit HTML, and uh, oh, let's uh, we'll, we'll store it as demo. All right, this is uh, yeah, let's do that, okay? And then. Uh, and it'll run through the thing and uh, and it generates it, okay? Um, and so this is, uh, you know, you put in summary cars and you can put in something like uh, mean of cars dollar sign um, speed or something like that, okay? And then when you click knit, what happens is that the summary of cars get gets uh, printed and then when you, because I typed in mean of cars dollar sign speed, it uh, prints that out 15.4, although that's already included in uh, the summary, okay? Plots also, if you wanted to uh, create a plot that gets, um, that gets put into the, uh, the document as well. Um, you know, I'll, I'll post, uh, post my slides. As far as, uh, you know, here for the output, it says IO slides presentation, and that's why you know, it looks like this. It looks kind of like a poor man's PowerPoint. And, um, you know, uh, if I wanted to make an HTML document instead, I would just type in for output, I want HTML document. And then the content of my lecture will just get turned into uh, basically a flat form HTML file. And it has all this stuff, you know, welcome, my commitment to you, all of this stuff. And, um, and it's very easy to read. And, uh, and there you go. That's that's what this looks like now, okay? Um, and that's that's what we have there. Um, there's another presentation version. One's called Slidey, okay? Slidey presentation, and uh, and when you render it, it looks uh, like this, okay? And this is uh, this is also nice, and uh, and it has. So you know you don't really get a whole lot of customization as far as what the um, the stuff looks like but you know it does you know and when you have code it it makes sure it looks like code and things like that okay so I think this is actually where we left off so yeah you know to uh, to get R markdown working you might have to run install.packages R markdown um, often when you try to say create a new R markdown it'll say like you don't have the R Markdown files. Do you want to install it? And you say yes, please, and um, and and it does that. Okay. And then uh, you know it it puts in the head header, which which is this YAML is yet another markup language uh, or Markdown uh, language, I think. So it's that. And then you uh, you click render. Okay. And it produces the HTML file or something. And so you know your first homework assignment. It's uh, it's posted on CCLE. Let's see if I can get in. Okay, here we are. All right, 102A lecture two. Here we go. Okay, and then so your first homework is uh, is posted, and so you're gonna go to homework one, our markdown template, and this will download uh, the R Markdown file, okay? 
and then you come over here and then you you open it it loads up in here okay and then uh, you know you'll answer your questions uh, so the first homework assignment it's uh, it's a little bit more um, dry okay the uh, the other homework assignments there there will be a lot of lot more coding involved uh, and I'm I'm trying to make the homework assignments interesting yet uh, educational at the same time so that's a, that's a challenge in writing uh, homeworks. Um, but the first one just kind of covers some n the nitty gritty of uh, data structures in R. Okay, and it's going to be kind of like you read the book and you answer the questions. Uh, but but I think it's very uh, very important if if you ever want to call yourself someone who's proficient or uh, very good with their R skills, these are these are questions you need to know the answers to. Right? Like, what's the difference between null? N-A and N-A-N, okay? Um, maybe you know the answer, maybe you don't. Well, you'll have to uh, answer that as part of your homework um, for the, uh, this week. So um, anyway, uh, you'll, you'll do this. You'll uh, render it. You'll submit the HTML file on CCLE, and, uh, and that's how it goes. Okay, so uh, looking forward to a great quarter, and uh, we'll end there. <laughs>